What's up everyone, I am Toku Tyler, and today we'll be talking about episode 9 of Lupin Ranger vs. Pato Ranger. This episode, as usual, I loved this episode. The story was great, there was a new vehicle, just all around this series is just really good, so let's just jump right into it. We start with Keiichiro uh, walking to, sorry if I said his name weird, he's walking uh, to work enjoying the weather and talking about spring and everything which is nice and we then see a stranger walk past him now he just thinks he's just some weird guy dressed weird and eating ice but we know him to be Zamigo. but like i said keichiro doesn't know this so he just thinks he's a weirdo this information will become relevant uh soon hopefully so it's it's just really cool that he just had a run-in with Zamigo and didn't even know what he was in for. Like, he didn't even know. So I just thought that was kind of cool. Zamigo is going to be very relevant soon, so I like that. So we then go to the bistro where the Lupin Rangers are talking about this famous jewelry designer, Emma Goldini. And about, you know, Umika is very interested in fashion. We know this and everything. She's very interested in that sort of line of work. So it's really cool. And then we see Kogure show up out of nowhere as usual, very shifty. And he says that they need to uh, secure the pendant she wears, this this little jewel that she wears on a necklace, and because it might be a long lost piece of the collection. It was lost long before the ganglers took took everything from the collection and it's it's very interesting that we have an item that neither side had first it was it was always like missing so that's very cool and upon uh further inspection like a closer look at it it does actually look like the vehicle that it's rumored to be but anyway the lupin rangers track her down to this building she's in a meeting and everything and then a gangler attacks her um, in the building. The Lupin Rangers then jump in through the window <laughs> and fight off the gangler. We get this awesome fight scene in an elevator between the gangler and Lupin Red. Just the choreography for these fights is so cool. I love those like very close quarters. Very, very nice. So anyway, Blue and Yellow then take the gangler while Kyrie goes after Emma and she runs away because the gangler uh, tells her basically that he and Lupin Red are after the pendant. So I like that he just gives it away and then she can't trust either of them. So it's it's funny. Kyrie then goes after her but notices that there's a security guard passed out on the floor. So he disguises himself as a security guard to get Emma to safety, which I thought was very, very crafty. I like that. And then the Pata Rangers show up to the fight, but that's pretty much that's pretty much it for them in that moment. They just show up and fight the Gangler, which it's it's okay, it's okay, very central to uh, Lupin Rangers, but it's fine. Um, Kyrie then gets Emma to safety, obviously, and then tries to buy the pendant from Emma, but she says no, and she thinks that he works for her sister. And when they go to the bistro, we learn, you know, her past with her sister and everything. And we get to see a flashback of Kyrie's brother. The brother who was frozen uh, by, supposedly frozen by Zamigo, but I'm pretty sure it was Zamigo. But anyway, we see this flashback because Kyrie can relate to her story with her, with Emma's sister. Because Kyrie's brother was a star basketball player and Kyrie wanted to be just like him, but when he when he was in an important when he was playing basketball and everything, he missed the final shot, and he felt like he could never be as good as his brother. And Emma feels the same, like it started to be painful to be around her. And Kyrie tells her that it's better to go see her now while she still can, otherwise it would be too late. And I thought that was. A very good moment we didn't really we haven't really gotten any sort of story on Kyrie's brother we've gotten 
to learn about Umika and Toma's, you know, loved ones. But I like that we're finally getting to Kairi's. So this is this is a really, really touching moment about family and everything. I love that. So really good. We then see a news story about Emma's jewelry exhibit, which they were going to... The Pata Rangers were talking about uh, closing it because the, the gangler is after her main pendant, which is the main part of the exhibit. But they decide to keep the exhibit open to lure out the gangler with a fake pendant, which, as, as we see, goes as planned, thus leading to another fight between the gangler and the Pata Rangers. So their plan worked, and then Lupin Blue and Yellow show up to the fight, just like last time, while Kyrie follows Emma around. She tells Kyrie that she knows he's a Lupin Ranger, and he reveals that he needs the pendant to see to see his brother again, basically. That if it is a part of the Lupin collection, they need every piece of the collection in order to you know, make their dream come true to see their loved ones again. And she she ponders on that and realizes that's that's what he's doing this for. But then Destra appears and wants to take Emma's pendant because the gangler failed twice now and that it might be a vehicle that he's after because he wants to test it and everything. But Kyrie transforms and takes Emma to safety, but Destra launches a bunch of, a bunch of missiles and traps them inside a building it like seals them away and this is where we see uh Emma grab her grab her pendant and give it to Kyrie her reasoning for this is that she says it's basically not worth dying for which was funny cuz we we know that she's doing this so he can see his brother again but she wants both of them to see their loved ones again, which is which is nice. I, like I said, this is very, a very sweet sort of episode about family and everything, which is very nice. Destra then barges in, and and Kyrie then places the pendant on the VS Changer, turning it into the Scissors and Blade Dial Fighters, which is really awesome. I love that moment. It's very very cool, and it's it's actually the first time we see a collection piece transform which is kind of cool it was in pendant it was in a crystal form and then became an actual vehicle and it grew and everything which is cool so he then launches it and it flies away with him in it obviously and Destra summons a golem as he does and we go to the gangler fight with the Pata rangers and the other lupin rangers blue and yellow are you know trying to find their opening to grab the collection item and we get some more awesome fight choreography. Again, I just have to point it out. It's really good. And they they find their opening and but before they can before they can reach the gangler, Pater and Ichigo equips the the biker vehicle and destroys the gangler and the collection piece. It just the attack just flies right past blue and yellow and I'm not going to lie my heart dropped when it happened. I'm like, the music stopped. There was no sound. And it was it was such a weird moment. I thought they were going to do it. And at the last second, they they just they weren't fast enough. It was it was such such a powerful moment because a piece has been destroyed and it's they Lupin Yellow just drops to her knees and and Toma is just standing there with his head down, just, you know, and the Pata Rangers try to arrest them, but they they have to go deal with the giant golem that is trashing the city, basically. And so, as usual, Good Striker flies in and starts freaking out about the Scissors Dial Fighter returning, like it's something important to him. So he then forms Pato Kaiser and Good Striker... <laughs> Good Striker pops up and tells them to stop shooting the new Dio Fighter like it's super important to him. You know, obviously because it's a collection piece, but I just find that funny. And they like, and Pater and Ichigo just like pushes him down out of the way. It's funny. In the end, uh, Pato Kaiser ends up getting split up because the golem's powerful, which I found, found kind of weird that a Megazord couldn't do it. And then 
Kyrie uses the scissors and blade vehicles to destroy the golem. So either the vehicle is that powerful, or it was just a moment for the new vehicle to be shown off and everything in the show. But it's it's fine. Either way, the golem was destroyed. So back at the bistro, Kyrie arrives with a new vehicle, all happy and everything because he was successful. He got the piece and they got a new vehicle to use. But he finds out from Toma and Umika that the gangler and his collection piece was destroyed, leaving the episode on a very sad but interesting ending. So the final thoughts on the episode I have are, this episode started as usual, a gangler shows up, they fight it, and then it went a new direction. We gained a new vehicle, but lost one, lost one of the collection items as well. So either two things will happen, I think. One, the piece is gone, and they will continue the show like this, or two, the gangler wasn't actually destroyed, and there may be a possibility of continuing their mission. So, we saw him blow up, but there could be multiple reasons why he survived, like teleportation, or all kinds of things. But we know that it's either going to end up like this, or there's something's going to happen. Either way, there was a powerful moment, just... The possibility that this is all ended for them, the Lupin Rangers. It was crazy. And it's just a really good episode, really good ending to the episode. Very, very sad, but also keeps you like engaged in it. Like, what's going to happen next? I don't know. And it's really cool. So, awesome episode, awesome new vehicle. And I just, I seriously, I know I say this every time, but I really cannot wait to find out in the next episode what has actually happened. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified of future videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.